Welcome to our lecture online. Well, here we're going to show you some key concepts regarding trigonometry. And typically, when you first start studying trigonometry in school, they will deal with the unit circle. But ultimately, the application deals with right triangles. And yes, I should make a mark here so this indicates that this is a right triangle. And I will show you the similarity between the two. Now, a unit circle is a circle with radius equal to 1. And here we've drawn a unit circle. The radius of this is indeed equal to 1. And then if you draw a right triangle in there, like this, if you take, for example, a point on that circle, you then realize that the distance from the origin to the point of that circle, that equals 1. And if we draw a right triangle like this, you can then see that that point has coordinates x and y, so this is the x value of that point, this is the y value of that point, and the line that connects the point to the origin, that is the hypotenuse of that right triangle. And so I use the letters h, y, p for hypotenuse, I use o, p, p for opposite side, and a, d, g for adjacent side. So here we have two sides and the hypotenuse of the right triangle. Notice that the opposite side that length equals the value for y of that point, and the length of the adjacent side equals the x value of that point on the circle. Now, the relationship between trigonometry and the unit circle and a point at that circle can be explained by using the two functions, the sine of theta and the cosine of theta. And by definition, and this is really key to understanding, the sine of the angle theta, and here the angle theta is indicated by that little symbol there, it's the angle between the horizontal line and the hypotenuse. If you take the sine of that, it's simply the ratio of the length of the opposite side to the length of the hypotenuse. Now, of course, with the unit circle, the hypotenuse is always equal to 1. So in this case, it's going to be the length of the opposite side, which is y, whatever the y value is at that point, divided by 1, which is simply y. So that means that the length of this is simply equal to the sine of theta in a unit circle when the hypotenuse equals to 1. The cosine of theta is defined as the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So if we take the length of the adjacent side and divide it by the hypotenuse, we get the value of the cosine of the angle theta. So you may say, well, what does that really mean? What does the sine and the cosine mean? It's simply a relationship between one of the two sides of the triangle and the hypotenuse. For the sine is the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse, and for the cosine is the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. So if you then change that point on the line, you'll vary the distance or the length of y and the length of x, and so that relationship between the sine of the angle theta and the cosine of the angle theta can be defined like this. On the unit circle, the sine of theta equals the value for y and the cosine equals the value for x. As an example, let's say that the angle is equal to 30 degrees, then the sine of 30 is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse, the opposite side is y over 1, and in this case, for this to be correct, the sine of 30 is equal to 1 half, and of course we'll learn later how to do that, but if you use a calculator, you plug in 30, then you punch in the sine, you'll get 0.5. And so in this case, the sine of 30, which equals the opposite side in a right triangle on the unit circle, is simply equal to 1 half. That means that the value for y equals 1 half. And then for the cosine of the 30, meaning the cosine of 30, if the angle is 30 degrees, then what is the length of x? And it turns out it's equal to the square root of the 3 over 2, which is approximately 0.866. So when the angle is 30 degrees, we can, we can then determine by using the sine and the cosine, we can determine the length of y and the length of x, or we can determine the x and y coordinates of a point on that circle, on that unit circle, which can be found by drawing a line from the origin to that point, which then defines the angle. So that's the relationship between the angle, the sine, and the cosine of the angle, and the value for x and y on the unit circle. Now, that's what we use in mathematics. So if you take a look at the trigonometry book, they'll do a lot of exercises using the unit circle. But essentially, we want to use it to some practical application. And so triangles in general are the practical applications. It's a relationship between the opposite side, the adjacent side, and the hypotenuse for a triangle. Now you say, well, 
Who cares about triangles? Well, we use triangles in many applications in science, especially in physics, and so we need to understand the concepts. So when we deal with vectors and motion, all that, you're going to need these particular concepts. So let's say that we have a triangle, in this case a right triangle, and the hypotenuse is equal to 5, means the length of this equals to 5, and we're told that the angle is 30 degrees, and we need to find the opposite side and or the adjacent side. How do we do that? Well, we define the sine of the angle theta as being a ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse. So when we solve this for the opposite side, and notice that this, of course, is exactly the same as what we see over there. Again, it doesn't matter if it's in the unit circle or applied to a triangle, it's exactly the same. Take this triangle, take that triangle, they're similar, they're different in shape perhaps, and here the hypotenuse equals 1, and there the hypotenuse equals 5, but it doesn't matter how big or how small the triangle is, the relationship is always correct. For the sine of the angle, it's always equal to the opposite side divided by, by the hypotenuse, and for the cosine, it's always the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So here we solve this for the opposite side. That means it's equal to the length of the hypotenuse times the sine of theta. So in this case, the length is 5. The angle is 30 degrees. So we multiply 5 times what the sine of 30 is equal to. Again, you take your calculator, plug in 30, punch the sine, you get 0.5. And so that means that the opposite side equals 2.5. The cosine, which represents the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, if we now want to find the adjacent side, you then say that's equal to the length of the hypotenuse times the cosine of the angle theta. Again, the hypotenuse length is 5, the cosine of 30 degrees, well again you plug in 30, cosine, and you get 0.866 on your calculator, so 5 times 0.866 is 4.33. So here you determined that the adjacent side has length 4.33 and the opposite side has length 2.5, by using the relationship of the sine and the cosine, which gives you these two ratios. That's the key concept of trigonometry and those two trigonometric functions. At least, that gives you some foothold, and now we're going to go through some additional information in the videos to come. So stay tuned, and we'll show you all about trigonometry.